verse, we all should be filled with the Holy Spirit. I said that also last week. And um, so, as I was saying that and as I was preaching, and I said you can experience all of these things practically last week. And um, so, to take us further, I want to call for La to share his testimony, then I will get it today. Um, you know, I, I tell people that when you come to church, we should not only be what we say. Do you understand? There should be semblance of truth in the life of God's people. Our generation is not looking for what we see about God. Our generation is looking for practical experiences of God. So you say God can heal. Why am I going around with headache? Why do I still have ulcer? That's the question generation want to ask. Um, so I want him to come and share Fola Bade Daniel. Uh, can, you, can you come? The only, the only prayer I'm still praying for Fola, we are believing God together, is for Fola to come early to church. Can you believe God with me? Yes, Fola is like Tosi. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. So I had um, experience last week Sunday. I mean, during the prayers. So before now, I attended the uh, uh, youth service in Unilag, you know. And you know how um, Christ Embassy, they like to speak in tongues. So the pastor was like, I want everybody to start praying in tongues. I tried it, and I was laughing at myself. Because it sounded like, I mean, what are you saying? <laughs> you know. So last week Sunday, I said, okay, I was praying in English as pastor was, um, you know, talking about it. As pastor was asking us to pray, I was still praying in English. Then all of a sudden, there was this shift that just happened. And... I discovered I was speaking in tongues, and it was making sense to me. And no, no, no. And it was making sense to me. And I was just in this space, like I was alone, you know, like I was in. A f- it was, it was really intimate. Like it felt really intimate, and it felt so good. So I continued the momentum all through the week, and my week was amazing. I felt like I could do anything, you know. So I just wanted to share it with the church. God bless you all. Thank you. Hallelujah. You see, I, I said last week that Hallelujah. Amen. So I said last week, and um, what I said was that, listen, I, nobody lay hands on me. And nobody lay hands on him. He just started speaking in tongues. I, I thought that is enough for you to celebrate God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. He's an amazing God. All right, so let's go into today's food. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Now you can rise on your feet. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Very quickly. Let's go into today's meat. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to receive. I can't hear you. I'm going to receive. And walk in the reality of everything that the word of the Lord says. This is the Bible. I believe what it says. I believe the law of the book. And the law dictates my experience. I am walking in the reality of the experience of scriptures. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and then verse 2, very quickly, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, however in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Mysteries. Verse 15 says, what is the conclusion then? So, um, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, 1 Corinthians 14, 18. That's what we are using today. Bible says, what is the conclusion then? Verse 15, I will pray with the spirit. And I will also pray understanding. And then verse 18, Paul speaking again. He said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. I, I mean, I can stay in front of this church and I can say, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. I mean, I, you see, when you read scriptures, you find some boasting in scriptures. Sir. I mean, Paul was writing a letter to a whole church. And he was so certain that he was speaking in tongues more than them all. I mean, how can you, if you say this in our generation, people will say, how can you know? Uh, do you know that I wake up speaking in tongues? Do you know how much I speak in tongues? What, what I, you see, these pastors are just proud. What's the meaning of the call calling an apostle? He's saying he's speaking in tongues more than all else. But, but you see, he was saying truth. He said, I speak in tongues more 
than you all. Today, I want to speak to us on the power of speaking in tongues. Look at your neighbor and say, the power of speaking in tongues. Power of speaking in tongues. After today, you are going to be blowing tongues everywhere. You are going to be speaking so much in tongues. They are going to look at you and say, what, what really happened? What really occurred? And you will tell them, I've entered into a depth. Sir. And I understand now. Because you see, many times, like I said last week, many believers are told what to do, but they are not told why they need to do it. Many times we are told that we need to pray in tongues. I mean, you give your life to Jesus. They say, have you started praying in tongues? You look at them. But, and eventually you start speaking in tongues, but you don't even know why. Many believers cannot tell why they speak in tongues. They don't even understand the benefit or the power. So after saying mata, 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 after a while, just give up on mata. Why? Because they feel that I can't, I can't gain anything. My sense is not getting it. And this is absolutely like a waste of time. Father, thank you because your word will bring light this morning. Thank you because with understanding we walk even our life and we traverse even our, our lane and our journey. Lord, thank you for the purpose for sending your word shall be fulfilled. And we all shall be better people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' matchless and beautiful name we are prayed. Amen. Can I have a believing amen? amen? Have your seat in God's presence. The power of speaking in tongues. I would like to say to you that the word of Can I say it again? That the word of God is your advantage. I'd like to mention to you that the word of God is your advantage. Therefore, you must make the word of God the foundation for your life. Why? Because the word of God is your advantage. Without the word of God, you cannot live. You cannot excel above the word. Can I say that to somebody again? You are in the word, but you are not of the word. What you make you excel further than the word is the word of God. The word is your advantage. Look at your neighbor and say, the word is my advantage. Because God's word tells us what is possible. God's word tells me what I can do. God's word tells me what God can also do for me. So when I can find it in God's word, then I will live by it. So today, I want to share with you the power of speaking in tongues. What is the benefit of speaking in tongues? And I want to share it with you according to God's word so that you can begin to walk in line with scriptures and your life can be transformed by the power of the word of God. We define what speaking in tongues is last week. I told us that there is what is called xenoglossia. And I spoke to us that there's something called glossolalia, which means uh, there is a tongue of heaven. That's the difference. There is a tongue of heaven, the language of angels, and there's also the language of men. And I said in Acts chapter 2, when they spoke in tongues, people understand and heard them. Even though they did not learn the word. They didn't learn the language. Uh, but people heard them that they were praising God in their own language. So for me, me to say that you start praising God and worshipping God in Chinese. Uh, and a China man is in this place. He begins to say, wow, what's going on? You are speaking the language of men. But the Bible also spoke to us and told us uh, that there is a language that no man can understand. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. That he who speaks our own tongue speaks not unto man but unto God. For no man understands what he says. And Paul was speaking in 13, uh, also of 1 Corinthians. He said, if, uh, if you have the language of angels, uh, and the language of angels, uh, but yet you do not have love, you have nothing but sounding symbols. Uh, and that told us there is a language of heaven. There is a language of angels. Uh, and I told us that when I begin to speak in tongues, it's not every tongue that has an interpretation. Understand that? I'm just speaking directly to God. That's mystery. But there's also that's one when you speak to man. Today I want to zero him. On the power of speaking in tongues. So this is like an advancement, an advancing in the course, uh, even of the school of the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But before that, I always like to do this. Let me start then, let me give you five misconceptions about tongues. Five quick misconceptions about tongues. What people say. Five quick misconceptions about speaking in tongues. Number one, they say you aren't saved until you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you can speak in tongues. That's what people say. But open your Bible very quickly. John chapter 14, 16 to 17. John 14. I want to show you something there. Uh, John 14, I could quote it, but I want you to see it yourself. 14 and then 16 to 17, talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Can you see that? Whom the world cannot receive. It tells you that you cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? So, 
for you to have the Holy Ghost, you first of all must be baptized. Do you understand that? So when they say you are in saved once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's actually a wrong thing to say. Because first of all, you must have the Holy Spirit. You must be born again before you can have the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? The Holy Spirit is the, being born again is the first experience. After being born again, then you can talk about the Holy Spirit. It is very dangerous to pray for somebody who has not become born again, has not received Jesus, uh, and begin to say, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He can receive an evil spirit. Because he say, who cannot? So there are folks who cannot receive the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they have not been saved. They are not born again. Therefore, you cannot tell people that they are not born again because they cannot speak in tongues. Because I said it now, and I want you to believe it, because it's the truth that being born again is a, being, speaking in tongues is a consequential experience to first of all, having been saved. So the first thing is to be saved. And then the second thing is then being born again. Paul and the apostles, they add that Jesus, that, that the, those who are in Samaria have received the Lord. And then they went there and they asked them, are you, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, we have not even heard that there's such a thing called the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul at Ephesus. Therefore, they were first of all born again. You see that? Ephesians chapter 17, Ephesians 18. They first of all were born again before Paul could talk about being, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand that? So that's the first misconception. One of the dangerous things in the world is to convince sinners to start seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the, Jesus said they do not know him. So they cannot receive him. And then number two, concept, misconception is that they say tongues is not for everyone. Have you had it before? Yeah, have you, you know, talk to me. Have you had it before? Say, tongues is not for everyone. They say tongues is not for everyone. I, I, I mean, I've had people say that. Eh, tongues is not for everyone. Tongues not. Hello. Tongues is for everyone. The gift of tongues is not for everyone. Do you understand that? You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 29 to 30, Paul was talking about ministry gifts. And then he said to some tongues, the gift of tongues. That is different from the Holy Ghost baptism, which is for everyone. Are you, somebody listening to me? It's a misconception. So, I mean, if you are in some streams uh, in Christianity, um, they would believe that those who speak in tongues will also prophesy. Uh, so, uh, it is the prophet that speaks in tongues in the church. I, 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 do you know what I'm saying? So, when they start, you know the message is coming. So, every other person, they don't speak in tongues because they believe it's not for them. It's for only those who have been called to the office of the prophet. You find it? I don't want to mention names of those, but you already know. You already know. Speaking with tongues is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And the infilling of the Holy Ghost is not speaking with tongues, uh, but they go hand in hand. Therefore, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, Paul said it again. He said, do not be filled with wine in which is essence. 518 of Ephesians. He said, do not be filled with wine in which is essence, but keep being filled with the Holy Ghost. That means that, that you are filled with the Holy Ghost today does not mean you will not be filled again tomorrow. But it is not every time that you are filled that you, it's, it's not every time that you get speaking in tongues again, newly. No. It's just one experience. But every time, according to scriptures, and I told us this last week, uh, that people get filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, they also speak in new tongues. So they, you cannot, there's a physical focal evidence. First Corinthians 12, 29, 30, 30, Bible says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, uh, have all the gift of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Here Paul was speaking of ministry gifts. He was not speaking to everyone. And it shall come to pass in those days, Joel 2, 28. That will pour my spirit. On who? On prophet? He said, on all flesh. So, can you pinch yourself? You get a flesh. So, on all flesh. Sons and daughters. On all flesh. Number three. And this is very important. They say, I can't pray in tongues at will. You see, when the Holy Ghost is not enough in people, <laughs> when the infilling is not enough, you hear them say, I only pray in tongues when the atmosphere is hot. It's when I get into ecstasy that I start praying in tongues. Because I called a lady. I said, let's pray in tongues. Let's pray together. He said, ah, I can't come like that, sir. 
<laughs> he can't come like that. Sir. I said, I don't understand. He said, no, sir. He, I said, okay, let me start. And then I started. He said, no, you can't come like that. He said, we have to worship. You must have been praying for a while. Then I will enter it. No. Sweetheart, no. It's not like that. Look at this. They said it is the spirit that will pray in them for them to pray in tongues. If the spirit does not move them enough, they can pray in tongues. That's a misconception. Can I show you from scriptures what the truth is? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. The Bible says, for he who prays, he who does what? He who prays. It didn't say he who the spirit speak prays true. Who is that? He who prays in an unknown tongue. That means you are the one who decides to pray. You are the one who decides to stop praying in tongues. You are the one who starts speaking in tongues. You are the one who decides you are not doing that anymore. He that speaks. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 to 15. Paul was speaking. He said, and then when my spirit prays, he said, my understanding fails. That means that he understands that it is his spirit, not the Holy Spirit. My spirit decides to pray in tongues. I, I choose to pray in tongues. I start praying in tongues. You do the praying, not Holy Spirit. You do the praying, not ecstasy. You do the praying. Let me say this to you. You know, sometimes when we start praying in the spirit, I've, do you all know that there are depths in praying in tongues? I mean, you start praying in tongues, it's like you are plowing the ground. It's like it's dry. And then you continue for a while, and then it seems you hit a gosha. That, that's what um, Kennedy again will call it. You hit a gosha. I mean, you do makalaba, shekaleve, venenenem, brakalibra, hodolo, koli, and then you... And you are just continuing. But after like 15 minutes, sometimes, even 5 minutes, sometimes 2 hours, and then it seems like something else has taken over. And then, and then you continue. You know that it is not you praying anymore. Time does not matter anymore. There are seasons that you pray in tongues yourself. Seven minutes. And then you are thinking you have done three hours. But there are seasons that you just continue praying. And you are amazed that you have done three hours. Because you felt like it was 30 minutes. Why? Because you hit something. Keep on praying in the spirit in your private place. Keep praying in tongues. Number four. They said all tongues are prayers. I think I mentioned it that all tongues are not prayers. All tongues are not given for the purpose of prayer. Why? Because I've also spoken in tongues before in assemblies and it has meaning. I mean, sometimes when you pray in tongues or you speak in tongues, sorry, when you speak in tongues, it's not praying in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you are actually communicating divine truth. For instance, they were not praying in Acts chapter 2. They were worshiping God and they had them. At a certain time, you may give a message to somebody in tongues. Uh, when you speak a language, they don't understand. You speak Chinese, for instance. I, sometimes you give a message in Hebrew. I told us, as an example, that I was praying for somebody last week. I, I was praying with somebody, and then I started speaking Hebrew. And I did not know. I, I don't know how to speak Hebrew. I, I don't know. All I know, it's uh, Obinigwe. That, I mean, and that you learn, Igwe. All those ones you learn from learning a song. You understand? But I was praying for the person, and I spoke Hebrew. I did not know I spoke Hebrew. But I knew I was not speaking. This is not my normal tongue. And the man came to me later and said, you know you are saying these things. Now, that, that was a message for him. Because God wanted to communicate through, to him. And he wanted himself to be glorified. Exalted more than what he can hear in English. Do you know if somebody comes into this auditorium and starts speaking in tongues, and then he starts speaking Okene language, and you are from Kogi, something will hit you differently. Ah, no. You say, ah, this man, how did he know this? You will feel like God has exalted you above every other person in the auditorium. He's speaking to you personally now. So you can break down. That tells you what tongues is. So, number five, tongues are just ability to speak in foreign language. You know some people, God has called them to missions. And they say, I don't even need to learn Chinese. All I need to do is just believe God. I, I, don't, I believe God. And then when I get there, I'll just start preaching in tongues. They will not hear a thing you are saying. They will not hear a thing you are saying. Because you are communicating mysteries. So quickly, let me go further here. I want to speak to you on the power and the benefit of speaking in tongues. First Corinthians chapter 14 and then verse 18. Paul said, I thank my Lord that I speak in tongues more than you all. Sir, ma, there is something Paul knows. I believe Paul was not wasting his time. For him to have not said, he's not saying it, that is the matter. He's actually doing it. For him to have prayed so much in tongues, to be able to make that statement that I pray in tongues more than you all. Do you understand what I'm saying? It must be that there is something he understood about the mystery of tongues and the power inherent in it that he wanted to under, them to understand. And that's why he told them, I thank my God that I 
pray in tongues more than you all. Today I want to share with you certain things I believe. And how can I know the mind of Paul? How can I be able to explain what Paul had in mind? Because he wrote books and letters. And from those books and letters, I can understand his mind. I can understand and know what he's thinking. So today I want to speak on the power and the benefit of speaking in tongues. Number one, you know, I like to put it in point so that you can go with me. Number one, it is a supernatural and divine means of speaking with God. Tongues is the supernatural and divine means of speaking with tongues. Tongues is a spiritual method of communing with the divine. Of having fellowship with God without your mind being involved. When you pray in tongues, your communication is apart and is not in your flesh by demons or by devils. Somebody listening to me? All right, so I, I, my language barrier, you know, some people, they will say, I don't even know how to talk. Do you know some people cannot express their mind? They can't communicate well. So even when they want to ask you for something, they don't even know how to say it. Uh, because they, 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 they feel like they are not so good with words. They are not good with vocabulary. They, are, they don't have range in grammar. But when it comes to tongues, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. You know, I was telling somebody, I said, Serema Karima. Serema it can mean 10 things. Don't think logic. <laughs> you know when they say pray for healing and the person says Serema Tere, Serema Tere. Okay, now, Pray for a child. He says, Serema Teme. It's the only thing he keeps saying for you because you have been taught, sir. Because you live by your mind. You operate by logic. You think that language is the same. Therefore, if somebody is going to be saying something different, then his language must change also. If I say stand up, it's not the same as come. I cannot be saying stand up, stand up, stand up, and it's meaning the same thing, and it's meaning different things. And that's what happens in the spiritual. You can keep saying the same thing, but it's meaning different things. So somebody is saying, I'm doing tele, telema, rotua, telema. Somebody is saying, we don't even have tongues as that to show. It's te, te, le, te, te, te. You are doing one syllable, one syllable, one syllable, every time. That one syllable does not mean the same thing. The reason you think it does is because you have been trained to operate in this three-dimensional world. There is a word that your spirit being understand. And he who searches the earth knows what is in the mind of the spirit. So what I call tongues, it is the coding language of God. It is the coding language of divines. If you are in divinity and in the lineage of gods, then you can code. You can code. Somebody say, I, I don't want the person beside me to hear what I'm saying. Then you can code it. You can code it. Have you ever find a, somebody coding a, a developer working? You see them and you look, you can be looking at what they are doing. But you can't understand a thing. Now when they are done with their coding, they now go to a page and then you see that the whole thing is so fine. You wonder, how can these numbers turn to these pictures? What's going on here? Because they have coded it. Let me say this to you. When you begin to code in the place of prayer, your word will also be like that word of that developer. Somebody will now get to that website and say, wow, is this the jargons I'm seeing? Look, sir, in the spirit we are coding, but what we are coding is that we are actually building. It's still going to come out in a three-dimensional world that people can understand. Can I have an amen? amen? Tongues is God divinely mapped out method to get his sons and daughters to communicate with him. Sons and daughters. When you pray in the spirit, God unravels the secrets of your, of your spirit and manifests his work in your life. Chapter 8 and then verse 26. Number 2. Tongues is prayer apart from your mind and your understanding. And that's the problem many people have with tongues. But that is the benefit of tongues. <laughs> you see, people say I can't pray in tongues because my mind cannot understand what I'm saying. It feels to me like I'm wasting my time. Listen, sometimes our, prayer, our problem is not prayer. Our problem is not knowing what we should pray for. As we ought to. Sometimes you cannot afford to trust your buyer's mind. Have you seen young men praying that God? That is the woman who. <laughs> Let her say yes. Let her say yes. And God understands that that yes is your destruction. So when you are praying and say, God, I found favor before her. Oh, the Bible says, whatever my soul or my feet I have for an inheritance, I have this woman for an inheritance. Glory to God. A man to heal. As you are doing that, 
God understands that if you know what I'm trying to save you from, you will not pray that prayer. And therefore, you begin to pray in the Spirit. You know, James chapter 4, verse 2. James said, you have not because you ask not. And then in verse 3, he said, you ask, but you do not receive because you ask amiss, wanting to put it upon your pleasure. Meaning that, listen, it is not that they were not praying, it is that the intention of their prayers were not right. And therefore, it is important you must learn to pray in the Spirit. We miss the mark if we pray in understanding at certain times. Paul therefore encouraged them to pray in the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. He said, pray with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 15. Paul said, this is the conclusion therefore. He said, I will sing in understanding. And I will sing in the Spirit. He said, I will pray in understanding. And I will also pray in the spirit. I would pray in the spirit. Why? Because he had come to an understanding that you see, you can't trust your mind. You know you can't trust your feelings. Somebody say, I feel good. So when you feel good, you want to pray, but when you feel down, what do you do? It's not, your feeling cannot be trusted. Somebody say, I'm in love. I say, it's not the first time you're in love. <laughs> it, that's not the first time you're in love. We will break it down. You've been in love before. You see why I can't trust your feeling? Because before you are in love with Cynthia, now you are in love with Tolu. <laughs> if Tolu says no, you will be in love with Eugene. Glory to God. So your feeling is changing. But the Spirit of God is not changing. The mark for our life is set. And we must learn to trust God to walk us through that path. And that's how we pray in tongues. We pray in the Spirit you speak in tongues. And number three, Tongues is a means of spiritual edification. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4. He who prays in unknown tongues is edifies himself. Edifies himself. He who prays in unknown tongues edifies himself. 4, 18, 14, 18. Paul said, you know what? I thank God I pray in tongues more than you all. You know what he was saying? I am edifying myself more than you all. That word edify actually means to charge up. <laughs> he was saying, I am charging myself more than you all. Listen to this. And I will explain this. You know, I'm using a microphone. You can see it. I mean, you don't need the Holy Ghost to tell you. You can see this is a microphone, right? Glory. But you know that this microphone uses a battery system. You understand that? Uh, and uh, at certain times, when it fails and it's not working again, it's because the battery, the charge on the battery is out. The power is out. It's not that the microphone is faulty. It's just that the energy is gone. Your spirit is not faulty. It's that the energy that drives it is gone. Are you following what I'm saying? So Paul said, I will edify myself. And that's why you hear people say, when your battery, your car alternator is not working, and then your battery runs down, you may not need to buy a new battery. You may just go and meet battery chargers so that they can boost that thing up. That's why many people need retreats. Retreats are just boosting places. where You just go there and just charge the thing up. But you know the problem is that if after one month there is no charging and it's just used and wear, it will also wear out. So you will, that's why you see some people, when they come back from flaming, flaming conference, when they come back from a revival place, when they come back uh, even from a yearly convention, uh, they are on fire for God. But give them one month. They have soon forgotten. Waking up at night, wake up, okay. Netflix have flicked it away. Glory to God. You see, they, they, they are no longer where they used to be. What is the problem? Because they have refused the power of consistency coming up. It is what Paul had in mind when he said, Be do not be filled with wine in which is excess. He said, But keep being filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, guys who drink, glory to God. You know, guys who drink. You know, I, I love those. There are something amazing about guys who drink. <laughs> I mean, even if they're having a very boring and a long day, they don't show it. 
in as much as they can check their watch and it's three o'clock. <laughs> oh, three hours. <laughs> so they, are, they just linger there, just three hours. And you know what they do? Immediately it's six o'clock. They know it's traffic to eight. When they get to where they are going, they are just going to be with friends and they are going to be drinking. You know, they will not tell you that what they drank on Monday is enough. No, no, no. It's consistency. It's consistency. Because they have to keep drinking to feel what they feel when the time they drink. In fact, it has gotten so bad now that people take it first thing in the morning. Are you following what I'm saying? So, they charge it up. Now, when you see them, they are always happy. <laughs> they will say, Robby, say trash, because they are drunk. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not them anymore. It's Hector. There's a spirit. The same way those guys are should be the way you should be excited every time you know it's time for my prayers. It's time to get charged up. Because it is not that there is no ecstasy in God. It is that we have refused to stay strong with him. When you come to a meeting, say, Father, move in this place. It takes 20 hours. It's because the people there have dead batteries. They are not charged up. But you will see some people, they just walk into certain halls. Hallelujah. They are crying already. You know why? They brought the presence. They never left his presence. They stayed with him. A generation must discover God again. Evano Siakataya. Only edify people can edify others. Only build up people can build up others. Only charge up people can charge others. Many times we want to edify people when we are not edified. To be sure, you must be building up yourself. I love the way the Amplified put it, Jude chapter 1 and then verse 20. He said, but you, beloved, build yourself up, founded on your most holy faith, may progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, like an edifice, higher and higher. Do you know what they call an edifice? That's a tall building like a skyscraper. Glory to God. Give me an example of one in Lagos. Tall buildings. Equanical Atlantic. You see, when they were building that structure, they first of all put the first layer there. And then they come build the second one. Then they put the concrete. They, they ensure the iron was good. And then they keep putting upon each other until a building will arise. Paul was saying, dear beloved, build up yourself. You are not just a foundation. Everybody, many guys have remained foundations. Many guys have been bungalows. He's saying, you know what? It should be an edifice. Every day as I plug in into the realm of the spirit and I begin to speak in tongues, I'm completing the second ground. I had the third ground. Endele, Kepeli, Akatua. Listen to this. When you see some people like Baba Deboe, it seems to you that they are living with God. It's because they are built edifices uh, that they are almost in heaven already. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, perhaps what that was happened to Enoch. Uh, Enoch just went to his upper chamber and then he refused to come down. Elemo Kahida Bahidi Adarosa. You must get to a depth with God uh, that every place uh, you don't begin to say, oh, let's not begin to pray for his presence. Uh, because you carry the presence. You are built up. Let me say this to you. Life never wants us. Situation will come that you will not know. You see, oh, he was sharing testimony. And he was talking about house rent. House rent is something that you know is coming. If you are not living in your own house. Do you understand that? But there are things that happen to you in life that you will never be. When you said, mommy never even told you that she had cancer. You know why she didn't tell you? She had the cure. She knew the prescription. She understood. She, she had prepared herself for that. When they tell you at work, they are downsizing, and then you start praying. It's late. You, you are built up for that experience. When they say, people are afraid, say, forget this. I don't stay in this kind of talk. Glory to God. They look at you and say, you have too bold. You are asking, I know who I dine with. I'm edified. I tell folks there are things I say you should not say. Why? Because you are not built up. It's not because God is partial. It's because we are not appropriating the blessing as we should. You're free. You can speak in tongues if you want. Number four. Tongues give strength in the inner man. Tongues give strength in the inner man. Oh, follow me, follow me, follow me. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, 14 to 16. Ephesians chapter 3, 
Vandale blako zagadayava. Venene venene shambalia. Every day you wake up, you, you must not let that opportunity go without praying in the spirit. Without praying in the spirit. You know, you, you're having a road, you're having a travel in the road, in the car, in the plane, anywhere you are. You must leave those places with tongues. I, I deposit some deposit everywhere I go. Sit down, check the phone for a while. You, I'm tired already. Under the nose mask, nobody seeing what you're doing. And never kapalu kapali. You don't have to, or not until you become a nuisance. In a public place, don't go there. And say, they will pick you out. I'll throw you off. Are you speaking to me? No. It's not the loudness. It is the tongue itself. Are you following me? Paul speaking here, listen to this. He said, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. What was his prayer? That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might through his spirit. That spirit there is a capital letter S, which means the Holy Ghost. He said, through the Holy Ghost in the inner man, that Christ may be fully formed even in you. Listen, verse 15 is very powerful. It says that you will be strengthened. That word strengthened there is the word kratos. You see that on, on the projector. Kratos. It means to have force. To be empowered to work stronger. So God was saying, Paul was saying, I pray for you that you will be strengthened. He was saying, you see, you can't run this race without an inner strength. You can't go on in the world. That's why people get depressed. Because something enters their mind. But if you are strengthened in the inner man, it is not what you go through that makes you depressed. It's what you are made of. What people go through and they are sad. You know, our generation has become a very weak generation. What is causing us sadness was what our mummies and fathers, that's what they used to use, a jar fish and gari. They said, it will be better, it will be better. And your mama worry, it will be better, don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. And you cannot sleep. They are sleeping. They are made of more. You see, you can be made of more. Strengthened with kratos. You are kratos in the inner man. How will you be strengthened? He said that you will be strengthened with might, with kratos in the inner man. Now, how will you be strengthened? He said you will be strengthened in the inner man. The inner man is your spirit. It's not your flesh. So when the strength of God comes, it's not coming on your flesh. It's not coming on your skin. The strength of God is coming upon your spirit. Sir. Paul, Job said there is a spirit in man and the spirit of God. When the inner man comes strengthened, uh, the Holy Ghost actually strengthens your spirit, sir. So that you have an unbreakable spirit. You have heard that word before? He has an unbreakable spirit. That's from scriptures. <laughs> the world use it. Say he has an unbreakable spirit. That's from scriptures. It means he has been strengthened by the Holy Ghost. He and his inner man. Now let's talk about that strength. Let's talk about the strengthening with might. That's what he said. That word might is the word dunamis. Which means miraculous power. It means abundance power. But I want to tell you something that it means. It's where you get the word dynamo from. It means power that has the ability to recreate itself like the sun. Do you know that the energy of the sun is renewed every time? There's, if you use your battery, even your remote control, it goes out. Your phone runs out of charge. Do you understand that? But there is an energy of the spirit. The dynamics of God. He has the ability. That means the more you use it, the more it's recreating itself. It's rebutting itself inside of you. So this is not that I'm using it, I'm tired. No, you are using it and there's a recreation going on. I got calabac what I have. The more you use it, the more you have. The more you use it, the more it shines. The more you use it, the more it batter. The more you use it, the more of the grace you walk in. I feel like we should take a tongue break. And Abashia. You know, people take a praise, praise break. Let's take a tongue break. Viadova Shekeliba Ruha. Amenda Dev Rakoko Blade de Dobra Kaliba Sata. Amenda Leka Hide Volo Braca de de Doza Galia. And Amene Malukle de de Doza Gataya. Evra Tule Broca Lida Volo Braca Tetelia. A Shekele Value Diabasa Kataya. Omareka Livla Dodo Dombra Kalia. A Shegete Kelly Abalua. 
I need a dove over here. A baro sabatia. One more minute. One more minute. And do 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 shekete ya. A beleke beleke. Toko 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 to. A kete 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 kete. Straighten. Kratos. 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 We do not miss. In the Hinaman. We do not miss. In the Hinaman. Our vovo lavali arabasha. You become unbreakable. Atia kata ekiata ta. O do 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 karato koto koto. Eshekelege to koto koto. Amrakoto koto koto koto. And the 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 do shekete ya. Emra de 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 do do liari abasha ta. Emra kala kaye kada barasha. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Number five. Praying in tongues. In line with God's perfect will. That's how I can pray in tongues. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27. For the Spirit helps us in our infirmities. That we do not know what we should pray for as we hold. But the Spirit helps us. With groanings. Which cannot be altered. But he who searches the mind knows what is in the heart of the spirit. Because it makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. It's simple, very clear. It makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. What's the will of God for your life? You know, I tell folks that you can pray for God's will for your life without even knowing the will of God for your life. I don't know that God wants me to relocate. I don't know that God wants me to even begin a plan for marriage. I don't know because he has not told me. I, I haven't asked. I haven't seek his mind for that. But I can begin to pray in tongues. And he who searches the heart knows what is in the mind. I can begin to pray for a will that is not even yet known to my understanding. That's why you should pray in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, you are covering grounds. You are in 2022. I love that testimony, sir. Ten years later, Ayakaba is living in the reality of a divine instruction. Give it ten years ago. You have covered grounds. If you have run with horses, you, are, you run with men, you are tired. How will you run with horses? And you are no more. That's why somebody say, I, I have everything I need. Oh God, everything you need does not mean you should not bring dogs. Hey, because you can cover ground. You can, sorry, ground is not okay. You can cover years and decades. Years and decades. Nothing should happen to you and surprise you. Even when it happens, you begin to praise God. Little wonder God was asking me to stay longer in prayer this morning. I didn't know that these people are going to come with praise news. We have covered it. Let's praise God. You know, people are saying, oh, let, let's praise it. Let's praise God. We have covered it. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. Why? I've covered it. I've covered it. You should, you should not get married and be praying for the fruit of the womb. You should have covered it. Cover it. One day in prayer, you are not praying in tongues. God will just start giving you names. You'll be writing that you have covered it. We've had names. Names. First child. Name. Otiwa. Later they were telling me, oh, your daughter's name is Ademide. Is it your wife that, because she's Allah Mede, you, you love her so much, now put Ademide. <laughs> Look at these people. It was when they were telling me that I even know that he sounded like that. I, I knew. So that as your life is in faces, as you step out of cuddle, you are moving to something, you have covered, you just know. People say, oh, Paolo, you just, you just resigned and then you move into, everything just is less. He said, I've covered it. I've covered it. I've covered it. Things you do not have understanding of. You can cover it. Because you are using a resource that the world cannot know. Neither do they understand. Jesus said they, they do not have him. He said, but you know him. How? He said he lives in you. Rivers of living water flowing from your belly. Somebody say, I'm praying to us, I'm born. So don't he start singing. You don't have to chant anything. You know what I tell folks? I say so much. Give me a song and I will turn into tongues. Give me now. Give me a song. You are the Lord. You just, I just say understand. I just keep I put tongues in that lyrics. <laughs> don't you think that's fun? <laughs> Challenge yourself again. You are never tired. You just keep going on. You just keep going on. You just keep going on. 
recovery ground. I'm not saying give me Mali Sango. And those, all those ones are not spiritual. All those ones, they kill the spirit itself. Spirit just abandon you in halfway. <laughs> the word infirmity is properly translated as shortcoming. That's what it means. That word infirmity is in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It means shortcoming. And I'll give you four shortcomings that you have. I don't care how rich you are. Four shortcomings that everybody in the world has. Number one is that you don't know the future. Number two, you don't have all the details and the information. Somebody says, you know, there's an opportunity. He is giving you half. Do you know even friends give half news? Uh -uh. You don't have all the details. There are people you have been angry with. They, don't do, they didn't do it. It's a lie. They came and lied to half truth. <laughs> Number three, you don't know the underlying conditions causing the problems. Somebody is sick, but you know you are praying for healing. The problem is not the healing. It's that he's, stay, he's eating something that is affecting his health. If that thing stops, he will be, he will be healed. You don't have all the underlying conditions. Number four, you can't guarantee that what you are praying for will solve your problem. I think that is deep. <laughs> can you guarantee that if you can sell land, it will solve all your problem? Even new businesses, several partners together, <laughs> when they introduce seven billion, then a new problem comes. A problem of trust and money. <laughs> a problem of I won't cut that. I know they do again. <laughs> you see, so every phase in life, you know, people ask God for a wife. And God gives them the wife. Say, give me a wife, I'll be complete. God give them the wife. They now start having problem with the wife. So they now start asking God again. Please give me wisdom to manage this thing. I thought that you said that if you have a wife, that's... There is no guarantee anywhere. In fact, your blessing is also an open door to another problem. I remember when I see people, I go to certain people's house. The house is clean. Clean and crispy. Peace of mind. They can gather money. They are going to France for holiday. Me and my wife, three children, sometimes my head is scattering. I want to read scriptures. They want to read me. Do you understand? They just want to be in your face. Go away. Give me five minutes. One, two, three, four, five. They are back. Say five minutes. Daddy, five minutes. It's, it's five minutes. Ah, they don't read time like that. Said by me. <laughs> you see, and that is another problem. Are you following what I'm saying? I can't pick my myself. Yeah, let's travel out. Way out. You are here. I wanted to travel. She had to be at home. Substitutes near another problem has come. You know you now. You don't even care. I can't. This boy now. This judge now. Tomorrow now, I can call him. I say I, I, I just landed in Abuja. Go see ya. Go someone. Nothing. He's just himself. But when he gets married, picks his own ladder and say, "I will be in it." I, I remember the last time he traveled to London. I was asking how long was it? He didn't even reply. You know you can't do that with your wife. Or can love her on two weeks? <laughs> you can't do that. When you go like that, two weeks, you come back, you come back to another problem. Because you have to, I'm almost two months solving that one. You are not thinking about my emotions? You just went like that? What, what kind of, you don't know what love is. I will report you to pastor. Not this one, you are calling you elder. I will report you. You are not very spiritual. Uh, you can see that there's no guarantee. Somebody said, understanding a woman. You are still dating. You are saying understanding a woman is difficult. Marry now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Marry now. <laughs> ah, Yoruba men cannot be true. Marry first. Ma you see this thing? Marry. Every face. Another face of wisdom to treat every level. Yesterday's wisdom is tale for today. That's why you need him. 
That's why you need to press in. Someone say, Pastor, everything seems set for you. Go set, Baba, go set. Because challenges are coming. I know that the devil is planning. So that in their planning scheme, I am already destabilizing them. They cannot agree. Don't wait till you are sick before you know scriptures. No. Number six, praying in tongues help you to respond to a burden to pray. Sometimes you are walking in your dream. I don't know whether God ever does that to you. But if God can trust you, he'll wake you up. <laughs> if God can trust you to pray, he'll wake you up. Sometimes he wakes me up. I know that I cannot sleep. Because even my heart beats would have gone to... You know when you wake up, my heart beats is like 160, 150. A kilo shilling now. I didn't have any bad dream. And it's sudden. You know it's a call to prayer. It's a, but you know what some of you do? You will now be rolling on your mattress. It's difficult to sleep in Lagos. You see, your refreshing is not the longevity of your sleep. It is God that gives sleep to his beloved. Haven't you slept for two hours and you felt very refreshed? And you did nine hours and you felt like you have walked? Ah, it is God. Sometimes it's body. And you know, when you have such burdens, how do you pray? You woke up from sleep. No prayer points. Pray in tongues. Sometimes the burden is for a person or a family. It's for a program. Sometimes for a situation. Sometimes no one. You just have an idea. What you don't have an idea, you just keep praying. Sometimes God will tell you as you continue in prayers. You start saying that pregnancy. You just start saying pregnancy. You don't know what it is. You don't know who it is. You see somebody on the journey, you say they, they are saved. So the next morning when they call you, I'm traveling, you say they should go. Why? Because you have prayed for it. Only by praying the Spirit can you successfully tackle burdens. Let me say this to you. And I want to say this with all reference and fear. Many things are happening to believers because other believers have not kept their space. Because at certain times God wake, woke you up to pray for somebody else, but you slept back. That is why that person lost her job. That is why that thing happened. Because somebody else refused to stay as the watchtower. Be on your watch. And you know, let me continue here. Because that's the next point. Number seven. Praying in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Eliminate selfishness in the place of prayer. prayer meeting, if I say, in the name of Jesus, can you pray? You will not lose your job. Hema, hem, hem. People pray. Can you pray for somebody who is looking for the fruit of the womb? They say, yeah. You will see that their intensity will just drop. Can we pray for the church of God? The intensity will drop. Selfishness. So God understands that men are selfish. So he gave us a coding language. As I tell you, you don't even know what you are praying for. You know, sometimes you are praying for one hour, you are actually praying for this church. <laughs> they have got you, you see? You are putting your head down. Ah, 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 ah. God understands, that's how I can get this. Room. That's how I can get them. Because if I told them that they are praying for Nigeria, I want to relocate, what's my own? Let me pray for my new Jerusalem, not the whole Jerusalem. But even in the U.S. and in Canada and the U.K., you know some people are still praying for Nigeria and they don't know? In Ghana, the spirit has put his neck there. Ah, ah. They are laboring. Praying that Nigeria will be well. And we will eat the fruit of the lamb. We will do it today. They are praying. So, you see, to eliminate selfishness in the place of prayers. Do you know that every year some churches submit prayer list? What is your prayer point for the year? 95% of those prayer points are about them. They don't, they don't even pray for their father or their daughters. Just them. And that's what God is doing. When we pray in tongues, the Spirit will take all together with us. It's no longer us doing the prayers. It is us and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and I, we change the world. Somebody sang a song like that. Pastor Hiren. Spirit and I will change the world. It's a collaboration. That's why the Holy Ghost is a compulsion for the believer. Number eight now. It's a compendium. 
pray. You see, I want to get the power of speaking in tongues. Number eight, it is a means of magnifying God. Acts chapter 10, 45 to 46. They add them magnifying God. They add them magnifying God. When you pray in tongues, you are magnifying God. You see, what happened in Acts chapter 10, 45, they went to Cornelius, Peter, and they, as he was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And they had them. That means Peter had that they were magnifying God in tongues. In tongues. You know, at certain times, really for those of us who are not called to the music ministry, we don't really have playlists in our hearts that is much. I don't know whether you have been there. After you've sang one, two, three, four, five, you are out of playlists. You are out of playlists. And then you, you now stop praying. Me, I don't stop. As I have done one, two, three, four, and he has finished. Who works that? The spirit and I. <laughs> studio one here, the studio of heaven. Emane aye akaire, ade rose ne mali anosha. Agare agaye kayana, evelele lo hujana yana. That's what Paul was speaking of. You see, I will sing in understanding, and I will sing in the spirit. We are never out of song. I discover sometimes as I do that. Then I now remember, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. So it's a, it's a whole total package. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. You are thinking which one will follow? Which, don't waste your time. If nothing follows, tongue will follow. Tongue will follow. Look at it as a tongue will follow. I <laughs> Have you tried? Tongues aid the worship of God. Let me move quickly here. Number nine, it helps us to stay conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, when you speak in tongues and you make it your, your tradition, it makes you stay conscious. You know, have you discovered why people in Canada, US, Nigerians that travel out, when they were here, they don't wear African clothes. But when they get there, they start wearing Ankara. They even call you. Say, can you send batik for me? Do you understand? They, 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 they call people and say, oh yeah, come and help me. So, when they were here, they were wearing suits. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Dress and gown. But now, you will, I saw one. How can you, a man be wearing lace? In Canada, he was wearing lace. <laughs> he just wanted to feel the culture and the language again. You don't need to tell me he's missing home. If not for ticket money, and he's thinking evil people will not let him go back. <laughs> he wore lace, he's psycho. He now put some package underneath and put lace on top. And was smiling at the camera. I said, People in the Koili will never wear lace. Men, how can you wear lace on a Friday? What are you doing? <laughs> but you know what? He wanted to still experience that culture. And that's why you hear them, even though they speak Queen's English, when they call their parents, they are speaking Yoruba. They are speaking Igbo. They don't speak English with them. Not because their parents can't speak English. But they still want to understand and stay in line with that culture. There's something about that culture that makes them closer to their country again. Listen to these tongues is the language of heaven. So I can take God anywhere I go. I can stay conscious of the, of the of, of, of country I'm, I'm, I'm from. As an ambassador, I can stay conscious. The more you speak the language, the more you feel the the more you feel that you are from there. Are you following what I'm saying? When two Igbo guys see themselves in a city called Kwara State in Ilori, they don't normally speak Yoruba or English. They start speaking Igbo. You hear them, they reply them again. And then they start speaking Igbo because it lets them know that we are fine family. That's what he does. Makes you conscious of where you are from. Because only conscious of his presence. But we remind ourselves that we are from heaven. That I'm not of this world. I'm not of here. I operate under a different set of law. The constitution of this kingdom is different. Do 
Do you know this is true? That when you enter the consulate, even in Nigeria, of Cameroon, do you know that they will be speaking French? Do you know that's the official language? Even though they are in Nigeria, the official language is French. Do you know that it's in your Laos, the official language should be tongues? Because you are not a Nigerian, really. You are from Zion. Therefore, I tell you that economic news is not your problem. Your problem is to know the Bible news. If you can know the Bible news, he said, I will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ. He didn't say according to the state of the economy you are living in. I cannot live long in a place. I don't have to tell them I'm a pastor, I'm a Christian. They must know. They, because they will know that this guy goes out of the house sometimes. What is he saying? It will not be long before they find out. Because there is an influence that is being dropped everywhere. We live in a very spiritual world. And you must learn to do that. Number 10. Tongue stimulates faith. Tongue is the seed of faith. Faith is aroused, kindled, excited and energized in us as we pray in the Spirit. The Bible says in 12.3 Romans, we have in the same spirit of faith we believe. No, according as God has dealt with everyone, the same measure of faith. 10.17 so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you see a man who lives a life of prayer, you see a man of faith. Do you know there are things that God told me and I couldn't believe it? I did not receive it because I couldn't believe it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I remember I, he sent the prophet and the prophet said, do you have a place in Lagos? I said, no, sir. He said, God said, I should tell you that he will give you a land for a church and he's giving you a church in Lagos. Listen to this. I had come to Ireland and I had priced how much. <laughs> Information is a problem sometimes. If you had given me that word from God, directly from Elori, and I said, hey Amen. But the problem was, myself and George had moved in around this town. George was giving me information. Myself and Obina, we had sat down with people telling us that per service it was two million. Are you following what I'm saying? On the island. I had gone to see houses and I, I, they had told me a land. I mean, somebody even brought a brochure to our house. I mean, I think it was those house. I saw a brochure and I saw a house of two billionaires in a in Ukoi. I said, You are there. You said, Sir. God said, You'll give me a land and a job. I said, Amen. You know that kind of amen? Amen. Amen. Even though I was charged up, I was not charged to that level. But you know what? Now I believe it. Now I believe it. Now I believe it. You know, the more you pray in tongues, the more you see possibilities in God. So as I begin, my friend has built, uh, he has raised the faith. Uh, there are possibilities in God. There are dimensions God wants to tell you. He can't tell you now. Because if he tells you now, you can't receive it, sir. There are still angels hanging in your life, or like Mary, trying to convince you to the possibilities of batting a vision. They can't leave you because you can't believe here. But the more you stay in the place of prayer, I mean, Daniel did not tell you some things. He said, yeah, last week, he began to see some visions. Some visions. He began to see some things. He said, he felt like he can do everything. That's what faith does in your heart. That's what it does. <laughs> hey. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe. believe. Tell your neighbor, I believe. I believe. What do you believe? Say, I believe God's report for my life. I am not small. I am great. I am the son of the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am from that tribe. I am from that tribe. Therefore, I cannot be a dog. I cannot be a pussycat. I am a lion. And I take over. I reign. I subdue. I have dominion. I subjugate. In the name of Jesus. There is a ferociousness you must carry. A seriousness you must carry. A boldness that represents you. 
You know, sometimes I'm afraid and then I pray for one hour and then I come and say, what happened? What happened? What happened? What, what, what do you say or call? What happened? What's going on? Before I went into his presence, before I plugged in and I charged the battery, I was weak. But when I charged the battery, I said, is it Lagos? Is it Abuja? Let's fire. Let's go. And them all shanda hida. Somebody gave you an information. Don't respond. Don't cry. Your faith can't carry. Don't worry. You feel like your dad is not dying. Your mom is not. Don't worry. Just calm down. Just say I'm coming. Lock the door. Build it up two hours. Find scripture. Just, I tell people out of two or three witnesses, the standard is two. The constitution of heaven says two. I find two witnesses. What the scripture says in John. What another one says somewhere else. And I begin to quote it. I said, God, I insist on that verse of scriptures. I insist on it. I insist on it. I cannot die poor. I insist on it. I insist on 8 9 of 2 Corinthians. Sir. I insist on it. Uh, for my sake, you, become, you became poor, though you are richer, so that I, through that divine exchange, uh, might become richer. Let my life become a reality of that world. I insist on it. Somebody say, What's the prayer point? That's the prayer point. I, ins I insist on it. So, for one hour, man, I'm just saying, Lord, I insist on it. He knows I'm not letting him go. He knows. You know you are too gentle. You hold on to him. You know God was begging Jacob. I've never seen that place before. God was begging Jacob. Please let me go. The daybreak. He said, don't you know by time before that it's only two hours to daybreak. <laughs> I had determined before, before now, that if I can only encounter you once, my life will change. Yeah. He, before that. So he said, oh, my bam, he said, oh Lord. The man said, what do you want? <laughs> he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Listen to this. The promise that was given to his fathers. Abraham had the promise. Isaac had the promise. But the manifestation of the promise came to Israel. Because he decided to insist on it. Even the trouble in his family of children. They were fighting. And, you know those were the names of Israel. Those were the nations of Israel. Levi. Reuben. Joseph insist on it insist on it insist on it look at your name and say insist on it insist on it ah, ah. God I beg ah, God, God I beg ah, God I beg this one this one was not God I beg this one was God saying Jacob I beg Jacob I beg Jacob, I beg. Have you heard it before? God was begging him. Let me go. Let me go. Ah! I used to say it this way. He heard God by the jugular. <laughs> oh, demon. If that was CAC. <laughs> but, oh, no. Ah! Oh, Takutsin. Then. Go where? Go where? I have suffered. It. You, you saw his testimony before Pharaoh. He said, I'm of a little days, but for many years, my years are full of sorrow. He, he had seen the years. You labor in Lagos. See where you are still staying. Forget the packaging. You can see. Ah! It's not God that beg. You will hold on to him so much. You will say, Daniel, I beg. <laughs> I beg. Say, Jacob, I beg. Jacob, I beg. He was begging him. He insisted on this. And because he insisted, he battered the promise that that stayed years. He battered the promise. Listen, don't give up on that promise yet. Insist on it. I perceive that in this house, one thing you'll be saying in the place of prayer is I insist on it. I insist on it. Because you have heard it again and again. I insist on it. Ah! That, that project will grow. I insist on it. I insist on it. Partners are coming. I insist on it. This week, help is coming. I insist on it. What does tongue do? Listen. 
I was in a place in Lauren Lath. I was showing them Zechariah chapter 1. Let me show you Zechariah chapter 1. It's a prayer meeting. Let me show you Zechariah chapter 1. I'm going to say church meeting. Let me show you Zechariah chapter 1. Ha. Huh. Are you there? I don't know why I'm diverting. This is not part of my teaching. But Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. He said, Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked to me, What are these? So he answered, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel. There is a horn that scatters. Therefore, sometimes some people will have one million to start a business. And then you discover they only have 100,000 left. There is a horn that scatters. You have a relationship. After one year, you can't find it again. There is a horn that scatters. He said, then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. Four craftsmen. And I said, what are these coming to do? He said, these are the horns that scatter Judah. So that no one could lift up his head. You see that? There are things in families that will not let head be lifted. So it is not just having the promise. It is insisting on the promise. Because those bars of containment, those bars of limitation must be broken. He said, but the craftsmen are coming to terrify them. To cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horns against the land of Judah. Every horn that is lifted against you the anointing of a law for the craftsman it will enter into you to scatter them it will enter into you to scatter them it will enter into you to scatter them every one that scatters your project your vision let the great of the craftsman let it come upon you that you may terrify them that you may bind them and that you may cast them out in the name of Jesus they say so that they will not be able to lift up their head there is no time for Selenke do Christianity there is no time for Sandeli Christianity you are not praying so that you can win you are insisting on your victory. Have I helped somebody today? Have I helped somebody today? Finally, tongues give spiritual refreshing. To refresh means to give new strength or energy. It means to reinvigorate. Sometimes you are weary. This is the rest where it will cause the weary to rest. Isaiah said in 28 11, he said, So that with stammering tongue, stammering lips, he will give them a refresh. Sometimes you are just weary, tired of that project, tired of the family, tired that things are not moving forward, tired almost at the point of depression. I've got a cure for depression, I've got a cure for anxiety, I've got a cure for weariness. The cure is to pray and to speak in tongues. Mendele mroko polo kro polo kro po shika taba leba laba laba dasha. You must pray enough that your battery get charged. Pray enough that the joy of the spirit is released into your life. Pray enough that grace comes upon your life. Pray enough the power of the Holy Ghost takes over. Pray. Zena maya mbale roche ke yere bolu ba yara ba zena yere mo salaya. Somebody say, I don't know what tomorrow is. I say, end time to pray. End time to pray. I'm afraid of my future. End time to pray. I'm tired of being let down. I'm tired of brokenness. I'm tired of broken relationship. I'm tired of being poor. End time to pray. Emra da 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 da